Dear students, Today I am going to take a lesson about our national leaders. The freedom which we enjoy today is the efforts taken by our freedom fighters to free our country from the British rule. Our leaders underwent immense tortures which cannot be explained in words. Their satyagrahas, sacrifices and tortures has yielded this freedom. Let's learn about their history right from their childhood till the last moment of their life. Students, today I'm going to take a very important chapter. You know what it is? It's about our national leaders. Mohan, listen. Ma'am, first you are going to tell us about... About our national leader Mahatma Gandhi ji. You are right. Let's see about him. Let me show you some of the important pictures of these leaders. His full name is Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. He was a victorious non-violent fighter. Non-violent means? It means without hurting anyone or not involving in violence. Do you know where he was born? In Borbanda. Correct. He was born on 2nd October 1869. After his school studies, he went to England to study law when he was 18. In that case, he was a lawyer. Yes, he was a popular lawyer and practiced law for 3 years in India and 20 years in South Africa. I will narrate few incidents that happened in his life. Once, when Gandhiji was in school, an educational inspector visited the school. Now I'll give you some English words. Everyone should write it. While writing, Mohan did not know the spelling for a word. Mohan, if you do not know, copy from your friend. But Mohan did not like to copy. Everyone has written all words except Mohan. Teacher scolded him. Though he felt sad, he thought what he had done was right. In another incident, once Mohan started smoking. For that purpose, he started to take loan and steal. The loan amount increased. To repay the loan, he stole a piece of gold from his brother's jewel and repaid the loan. But he felt guilty for what he had done. From that day, he decided not to steal and he wrote everything what he had done on a piece of paper and gave it to his father who was in his deathbed. When his father read it, he tore the paper without uttering a word. Mohan felt terribly sad and tears rolled down. From that day, he decided only to speak the truth. When he was in South Africa, an incident occurred which changed the life of Gandhi. In South Africa, Indians were treated very badly. Indians will be called as Kuli. One day, Gandhi was travelling in a train in first class. A European who boarded the same compartment Push out this Kuli! A guard pushed him out. He stayed there throughout that cold night. This incident seeded the thought of Satyagraha in his mind. Next day, when he continued his journey, he sat behind the coachman to avoid further problems. 
But when an officer arrived there, hmm, hmm, get down, sit on that luggage. Gandhi ji refused. The officer started beating him while other passengers interfered and made Gandhi to sit behind the coachman. Following this incident, Gandhi called for a public meeting and wished to start a committee. This brought awareness among the people. He followed non-violence and satyagraha and got freedom for India. Listen, let me also tell you about Subhash Chandra Bose. Before knowing about our leaders, let us see some of their photographs. Suresh, listen, Subhash Chandra Bose was born in Katak on January 23, 1897. His mother was Prabhavati and father, the famous lawyer Janaki Nath Bose. When Subhash was five, he was admitted to the Protestant European School at Katak. He soon became a favorite of the teachers. Subhash, who was not 12, transferred to Ravenshya Collegiate School. His headmaster, Benny Madhav Das, was a true nationalist. He seeded the patriotism in the student's mind. He passed his matriculation examination and stood second in the university. Then he joined Presidency College in Calcutta. In the college, the behavior of the British professors were humiliating to the Indian students. Subhash could not tolerate the way professors abused them. Subhash took a lead and called for a strike, which went for three days. And finally, the strike was called off when the professor apologized. But Subhash was thrown out of the college. He returned back to Katak and formed a group called Nursing Brotherhood to render service to neglected patients. Soon he became a popular figure. Again, he joined Scottish Church College. There he took military training. Subhash graduated from Calcutta University at the age of 22 and went to England to appear for Indian Civil Service Examination. He stood fourth in the ICS exam but resigned from the service only to take part in the freedom fight. He returned to Bombay and met Gandhiji and spoke to him about the freedom struggle. But Gandhiji suggested him to see Desha Bandhu Das and work with him saying my road to freedom is non-violent and yours is different. So Subhash joined with Desha Bandhu, formed Swaraj Party which organized for demonstrations, processions and meetings for which he was imprisoned. His health became bad, so he was released. Later, he formed the INA, Indian National Army. With the help of the Japanese army, he fought against the British army. But Japanese and INA was defeated. His friends advised him to hide himself as Britishers were in search of him. On August 17, 1945, Netaji boarded a Japanese plane for some unknown destination. He did not reach the destination as the plane in which he went crashed on the way. Is he dead? Does he live? There is no answer to these questions. Students, let me now tell you about Bhagat Singh. Can any one of you tell me his birthplace? Fine, let me tell you. Before knowing about our leaders, let us see some of their photographs. Bhagat Singh was born in a Sikh family where patriots were plenty. 
He was born in a village in Punjab in 1907. The freedom fighters of the early 19th century fought the British with their pen and made heroic speeches to arouse the nationalistic spirit among the masses. But Bhagat Singh of Punjab was different. Unlike his companions, he was a revolutionary leader who made fiery speeches and fought the British with his gun. Bhagat's heroic and patriotic qualities were revealed when he was a child of three. One evening, a boy of three was out for a walk with his father. There was also an elderly man with the father. Chatting, they walked on and went beyond the village. Suddenly, his father could not hear the footsteps of Bhagat Singh. So they walked back in search of him. He found him sitting on the ground and was busily doing something. Curiously, his father asked him, "What are you doing here, Bhagat?" For this, Bhagat replied, "Look, father, I shall grow guns all over the fields." He seemed to have a feeling that guns could be grown on fields. Hearing this, both of them were shocked. The Jallian Wala Bag incident took place during Bhagat Singh's period. As a lad of 14, he went to the spot and collected soil from the place and kept it as a memento for life and offered flowers and prayed. He took part in revolutions. Many were arrested and sentenced for life. Rest were hanged. Bhagat Singh who was hiding all the while planned to throw a bomb in the central assembly in the year 1929 the plan went on but did not harm anyone as it was deliberately made harmless bhagat singh could have easily escaped after throwing the bomb but he deliberately chose to be arrested as he wanted the court as the form for revolutionary propaganda every day they entered the court and raised slogans of inkulab zindabad and down with imperialism once bhagat singh along with his friends planned to kill a officer scott unfortunately bhagat killed sanders a junior officer mistaking him to be scott he had to flee lahore to escape arrest but when his friends were arrested they turned into approvers and bhagat singh was identified as the person who killed sanders Bhagat Singh was arrested. He did not want to disown the crime. So he was sentenced to die at the gallows. Being a person known for his courage and bravery, he did not wish to be hanged but he given a soldier's death. Do any one of you know what is soldier's death? No. It's sentencing a person to death by a gun. Courageous person who kissed the noose before being hanged. died at a young age of 23 in 1931 before knowing about sardar vallabhai patel let us see some photographs students you should also know the life of sardar vallabhai patel who was known in india as the man of steel you know why he was called so it is because he never compromised on his principles vallabhai who belonged to middle class agricultural family was born in the year 1875 He was very intelligent and a courageous person. That is a small example for his courage. Once when he was a very small boy, Vallabhai suffered from a boil in the armpit. 
There was a man in the village who used to cure boils by touching them with hot iron. The boy went to him. The man heated the iron rod till it grew red. But he hesitated, seeing at the boy's tender ears. But he got angry. What are you waiting for? The iron will grow cold. Hurry up, brand the boil. The man was even more frightened. The boy picked up the glowing rod and burned the boil. Those who watched him were shocked and screamed. Ah! Oh. But there was not even a trace of pain in the boy's face. Vallabhai, who completed his education, wished to become a barrister. But his father was poor and could not afford to send him to England to qualify for the bar. Vallabhai was however a person who believed in self-efforts. He therefore saved enough money by hard work and proceeded to England to study law. He successfully completed his bar examination and returned to India in 1913. He started practice at Ahmedabad where he made a mark as a leading lawyer with a flourishing practice. In 1917, Vallabhai had the opportunity to meet Gandhiji who organized a satyagraha against the tax collected by British government. Vallabhai took part in it. It was a success. Similarly, Vallabhai organized many satyagrahas and succeeded in it. He was conferred with the title of Sardar which meant leader. Thus, Vallabhai came to be known as Sardar Vallabhai Patel. In 1930, first civil disobedience movement was launched and Sardar was the first to be arrested. On his release, he again took part in the movement and was arrested again. This time, he spent 16 months in jail with Gandhiji, which he considered as the most significant one in his lifetime. He was again arrested in the year 1942 in connection with the Quit India movement. In 1946 September when the government of India was formed he became its home minister. Later when India attained independence he was appointed as the deputy prime minister. The British press hailed the services of Patel. This great man died in 1950 after a brief illness. It was due to his vision and statesmanship that India's unity was quickly achieved. Thus, from a humble middle-class peasant's family, he rose to become one of the greatest leaders of the country. Ma'am, even Azhar had written many books. Is it not, ma'am? You are right. He was also a national leader. But ma'am, he was born in Mecca and also did his early education in Mecca. Good. I'm glad that you know many details about him. Sit down. Let me show you some of the important pictures of these leaders. Azad's full name was Maulana Abul Kalam Azad. He was born in Mecca in 1888. Later, he migrated to Calcutta. He continued his studies in Calcutta with the help of local teachers. As a child, he was not like other boys of his age. Even his games were unique. He used to line up some boxes and pronounce it to be a train then 
he will sit on a box and say, Give way, give way for the Maulana from Delhi is on his way. Then he would get down from the box and walk deliberately like an elderly person. Azad was a very studious and intelligent boy. Once, when he was studying, a thief broke into the house and dropped 7,000 rupees. Next day, when the loss was discovered, Azad said, Please don't abuse him. He must be in great trouble to commit such a crime. We should rather pity him. He joined with Gandhiji and took part in freedom struggle. He disliked the Hindu-Muslim separation. He wanted them to be an Indian force. Not only he was a freedom fighter, but a writer and a scholar. He had written around 22 books. He died on February 22, 1958. His loss was a great loss to our country. Ma'am, will you please tell us about our Nehru Chacha? What? Your Chacha? He was not only Chacha for me, but also for each and every child of our country. What Nandini is saying is correct. He is very fond of children. Ma'am, he was born on November 14, 1889. Hey! That's the day we celebrate as Children's Day. We also get a holiday. See, we are celebrating his birthday as Children's Day. Let me show you some of the important pictures of these leaders. He was born in a very rich family. Born with a silver spoon, he was raised like a prince. He was very intelligent. Once, when he was a boy, he was playing with his friends. The ball fell into a small pit. Everyone tried to take it out. But the ball did not come out. Nehru went inside and bought water and poured it in the pit. Slowly, the ball came up. Everyone jumped with joy. Nehru and Gandhi had a very good and close relationship. Both of them together fought for our freedom. For this, they had been put behind bars many times. From the prison, Nehru wrote many letters to his daughter Indra Gandhi. All those letters had been published as a book called Discovery of India. He was the first Prime Minister of the Free India. He passed away in 1964.